Realistic Zebras at Sunset Acrylic Painting Tutorial and Time Lapse by Hot Pink Zebra Paper. Hello everybody! In today's video I'm going to be showing you a painting that I just finished that is two zebras, a mama and a baby zebra against a very sunsetty kind of eerie looking sky. I love this painting. I worked on it for over a month. It was a long time coming and I, you know, a couple hours a day, but still it was probably the longest I've ever spent working on a painting. So I'm very proud of it. I hope you guys love it as much as I do. And I just want to quickly apologize for being absent from this channel for a very long time. If you follow my nail art channel, you probably understand why I was part of an international competition for nail art and it took all my energy, but I'm definitely back to posting some art videos as well. I love to paint and it's definitely a big part of my life. So I hope, I hope you guys love this painting as much as I do and don't forget to click subscribe to see all my future videos Tip. as well. Tip. So in the background, I wanted to create a smooth sunset gradient from pale yellow to kind of a melon orange to a pale pink. And then finally at the bottom of the painting to a kind of a gray purple that would be where the ground would be, but it's all very soft and out of focus and very smooth. So we've got some of that grayish purple down there at the bottom, blend in a little bit more of like a richer eggplanty type purple to create a bit more variance in the very bottom of the painting for the color since it's not the sky down there, it's actually the ground. So there's a little bit a little bit more and then I'm going to airbrush the clouds over the sunset. So I started with black and created the shadow for the clouds and then some more detail to the ground and then I'm going to airbrush some yellow and some orange and mimic the colors that are in the sky that we that I used but intensify them a little bit. So instead of a pale yellow use a very bright lemon yellow and same thing for the orange use a more intense version of the color and that'll give the clouds just some really nice vibrant qualities and then take a little bit of white and do a couple highlights on those clouds. The great thing with using an airbrush for this is that you can get those fluffy clouds painted actually fairly quickly and they look so lovely and it just creates such a nice out of focus background, which I love to have a painting. I love it when my paintings have a very soft focus background, almost like a photo. So using an airbrush in my background is something that you actually probably have seen me do quite often. But now I'm going to be taking and painting my zebras and I finished or I started them with a layer of charcoal paint just to sort of block them out. And then if you want, after you let that charcoal paint dry, you can take a graphite pencil and you can sketch in their features. And that's something that you don't have to do by any means. It's not like it's a required thing. And I, in fact, I don't typically, but if you want to, you can, because you can just paint over it then and the charcoal color you know charcoal I don't use straight black paint I use a really dark gray so I call it charcoal paint it's just the color of paint I've had people ask me that if it's a specific kind it's just acrylic paint that's dark gray but then you can draw on it with graphite and it shows up so now with a light gray paint I'm going to be filling in all of the stripes of my zebra so if you noticed I didn't use black and white so far I'm using two shades of gray and actually in this lighting that we have for the background with that sunset, the two shades of gray actually look pretty appropriate for the base color. So you don't have to use straight black and white to paint a zebra. You can use these different gradations and use um, almost black and almost white. So we've got the stripes on the face and I've got uh, stripes going down the neck of my mother zebra. In this video, I did not record painting the baby zebra. It's fairly repetitious. It's very similar to painting the mom. And as long as you have those basic principles and you can get the you know, great idea of it. You don't really need to see both because it's basically the same thing twice. So I've got all of those wonderful stripes painted down my mama. And now I'm going to be adding some warmth to the stripes. So zebra's fur is highly reflective so that they don't take in so much of the heat from the hot tr climate that they live in. So their fur is so shiny and so reflective that if you put them by a sunset, their fur is going to take on some of the hues from that sunset. So for the white area of the fur, you're going to want to include colors like the yellow and the oranges and the pinks. Not overdo it. You don't want it to be like this huge, you know, rainbow across the zebra. And at first you can tell, you can definitely see that gradation of color. But then once you start adding some of the white little lines and fur texture on top of it, it does tone it down. So at this point, it can be a bit more vibrant than you want it to be at the end. And then in the black stripes, you're going to use those same colors. You're going to include some brown tones that have a little bit of an orange hue or a yellow hue, especially in the areas that are hit by the sunlight. So I've got a pretty dramatic shadow on my zebra. As you can see, especially on the body, there's that almost sharp line that goes from shadow to sun. 
and you're going to want to do more of those colors in the sunny part so once they get into that shadowed area of her neck kind of back off of those bright colors and just go straight with the grayscale which will you know really make that sunny part look so bright and vibrant and like it's just basking in the last bits of sun for the day so fill in all of those and it's so much fun getting to work and have a more expanded color palette than you may normally expect for a zebra i had so much fun and it was such a joy to kind of discover this painting as i went along because i could not find reference photos that did exactly what i wanted to so a lot of this painting was my mind making educated decisions and that was a really fun challenge for me so then as you're going through you're going to want to start um, painting the zebra's nose and same color palette you guys same basic thing as the black stripes but actually warm this up a little bit because the nose isn't going to be quite as black as the rest of the body would no matter what so you can add a little bit more of those colors and I don't have um, all of that much footage of actually painting the fur texture on these zebras because I wanted to include not this fast time lapse you know style so you'll see in a moment how for the fur texture I slowed it down it's actually it's real time and it's painting the individual strokes so when you're working on the nose as you can see you've got all of those wonderful colors and really softly blend them together you want that nose to look velvety and smooth so create a very soft blend from color to color and not color block it so much but just keep everything very gentle from one spot to the next and zebras also have little indents on their nose that you can you can fill in and so now I'm going to be working on the mother's eyes and same thing you're working on a reflective surface so you want to bring in some of those sunset background colors into the eyes so after I have the eye painted I'm going to be adding the highlights in her eyes and taking some of those really bright colors and painting them in and then going around her eye and adding all of the details around her eyes and filling in some of those extra spots that they have and beginning to fill in the fur texture so on the zebra's face, their fur texture is very, very short, almost like a dotted appearance around their eyes and down the sides of their face and down their nose close to where their nostrils are, where that stripes end. You want to keep those very, very short spotted uh, lines for the fur texture. But then right in the middle of their forehead, like if you think of if, where their third eye would be, if you want to think about it like that, but right in the middle of their forehead, their hair is actually quite long and it almost has a colic in it that spreads out and kind of dictates the fur growth in the rest, um, on the rest of their face. So there you want to have much longer fur, especially on the baby, because they've got slightly longer fur in general. So just go through and add that longer fur texture going all the way down. And then as you're working, get it shorter and shorter and shorter as you reach the tip of their nose. Nothing is going to be abrupt in the fur texture. You don't want to go, okay, long hair, short hair, etc. You want to just be, okay, this area is longer and then we're going to shorten it, shorten it, shorten it into the little dots. So try not to do anything too abruptly. Like I said, you want to do everything nice and smooth from one spot to the next. And so here's some painting of that fur texture. So as you can see, I have pretty much used, uh, you're going to use a lighter color on the stripes than what is underneath it. So for the lighter areas, you're just going to use straight white paint and add really I am actually painting fairly quickly. This is real time. And so you use really quick little strokes of the brush. And as you pull them, pull the brush towards your hand, you're going to lift up on the pressure of the brush so that it creates nice little tapered lines. And if you find that your acrylic is a little too thick where you're not getting these nice smooth lines, you can use, there's a couple different paint additives that you can mix in or even just a little bit of water to thin it out can do the trick but just fill in those stripes and remember that the closer in proximity the lines are, the brighter it's going to seem. So be very aware of how close, almost like pointillism, how close your lines are so that you can maintain a different, um, the different textures along the body because their fur, their fur is pretty short actually, but their skin underneath it ripples some and so you want to be able to control the highlights and the lowlights just with how dense your lines are. So here, this is actually on the front of the zebra's body. And you can see still with the white paint, just the little lines. And then I'm going to be adding her mane with black paint. So instead of starting out with a base of charcoal paint for her mane, I did black paint instead so that I could brighten it 
instead of going through and having the opportunity to deepen it for the main I wanted to have kind of the different chance to brighten it instead and then I'm going to be adding some texture to her mane and just right on the front of her face I'm going to be using those brighter yellows and oranges on the mane as they go down her back it'll also be in the shadowed portion so you want to stick more with the grayscale and add some really soft lines in the mane going through going down the black with a dark gray and then on the lighter stripes, you're going to want to be adding some white and create a pretty smooth transition from the back of the zebra into the mane by flicking up some little lines right at, right at the transition so that it kind of smooths it in from one space to the next. Add some highlights right along the very tip of the mane's hair because that area would be getting some of that highlight, some of that sunlight. So really just envision where your sunlight is coming from the entire time you're painting something like this, especially if you don't have a reference photo that is exactly what you're going for. If you're taking information from multiple photos and compiling it to create the image, really always keep it in mind exactly where you're painting and what it would look like and where the sun would be hitting it. So add those white lines over the whiter areas of the zebra's mane long long strokes instead this is not where you want to use a little flick of the wrist motion you actually want to take these lines and create these paints from your elbow or even your shoulder if you want to to create those nice long smooth lines in the mane and it definitely takes some practice getting the line work down and working on fur texture but it's um, a very methodical actually thing to do once you get it down so add all of those wonderful little lines in there this is where i'm going through and kind of smoothing the transition from the zebra's neck to her mane and blending all of that together and then the very last thing that is left to do for her is going to be to do her ears and so same thing we're going to be adding some of those warm colors into her ears and having it lighter around the edge of the ear and then darkening it towards the center where her ear would be going into her ear canal and add those lines and then add some different colors so the one ear is partially in the sunlight and partially in shadow actually they're both partially but the inside of the ear is partially sunlight partially shadow so you can see where there's that color shift from the really warm tones to the cool gray and then after that after you have that first smooth layer you're going to go through and you're going to be adding all of the little hairs inside the ears and these hairs don't all go in the same direction they're kind of curled they kind of go back and forth and you don't need to use just white to add those inside little ear hairs you can use some different shades of white gray browns tans oranges yellows and just have fun with it and add all of those little hairs the deeper they go into the ear into where you can envision that ear canal you're going to want to darken the color that you're using so not use that bright white everywhere add some shading you can create a very light wash with diluted acrylic paint and blend it over to create some different um, levels to those ear hairs and then repeat for the other ear so just go through and add all of those little lines everywhere so the one ear is tipped slightly to the side more so so the second ear the one that i'm painting now is not facing the camera or facing the viewer forward so the lines take on a slightly different cast to them and a slightly different angle and direction as well as you can see a different portion of the rest of the ear so you got all of those nice little lines painting in there and painting those little lines is something where you do want to kind of go between the flick of the wrist and the elbow and so you kind of want to use both your elbow and your wrist to create those lines never paint lines just with finger movement because they're going to be very structured and not have a freedom that they would get if you use you know if you let the rest of your arm take on some of the job and so then go through and add so those nice little hair textures and fur textures all the way down the base of the ear and adding all this fur texture like i said this painting was very time consuming for me it took me five six weeks to do and it definitely is the longest i spent on a painting hour by hour i would say this painting took me about 80 hours give or take to work on and I just loved it. I loved every minute getting to paint these beautiful zebras. I love zebras, if you guys, you know, can tell. And so getting to work on this painting was so much fun. And I absolutely love the end result. It's so rich and ah, I just love it. I hope you guys love it as much as I do. And like I said, I'm so sorry I was absent from this channel for so long. I am back. I have more paintings planned and I plan to be much more, much more uploady. So definitely subscribe if you haven't already. And I'll see you next time. Bye.